So I'm starting this video on September the 19th, so before the Raspberry Pi 5 has been announced, but I wanted to have a look at what cases would be likely to fit. And my cat's trying to get involved. Uh, and some of them are gonna be fine, others are not. And the main reason for that is before the Raspberry Pi 4, all the ethernet connections were on the left-hand side, as you can see here on some of these older Pis. Uh, the Raspberry Pi 5 is on the left-hand side, but when the Raspberry Pi 4 came, uh, because of manufacturing, the ethernet cable was on the other side. And this Compute Module 4 replicates that, so you can put a Compute Module 4 on this board, and it pretty much becomes something that would fit into a Raspberry Pi 4 case. Uh, the same with this adapter, which creates uh, a Raspberry Pi 4 from a Raspberry Pi 0 2W, or basically the same size and form factor. So, what cases are going to fit this Raspberry Pi 5 now that the Ethernet connection is on the other side? I've already done a video on the Raspad, which is a Raspberry Pi tablet, and it actually works for that, and it fits in fine. But we're not going to have as much success with something like the Pi Boy, um, although we probably could take the heatsink out. But basically, because the heatsink touches the CPU, and the CPU on a Raspberry Pi 4 is in a different position to the Raspberry Pi 5, uh, a lot of the other things are in similar positions. So, all the connectivity on the side, I say all the connectivity on the side, we have lost the 3.5mm jack. So, adapters that use that 3.5mm jack will either have to be adapted or not used. Some of my favorite cases for Raspberry Pi are the DeSalvo cases, which are excellent. These are all Raspberry Pi 4 cases, but because they're made from solid aluminum and the ethernet is on the other side, they're not gonna work. And you can see through the gap there, the aluminum goes straight onto the things like the RAM and the CPU. So they're all out, unfortunately, but I do love them and they are amazing cases. Other things that are out, uh, so this is the Argon 1 case, and because it's so specifically made, again, this is for the RAM and for the CPU, uh, it's just not going to fit. And also because the board that's used with it goes into the headphone jack, obviously we, we start to have a problem when we try and plug it in, because you can see there are now components there, whereas on the Raspberry Pi 4, if I line that up correctly, it would just go straight in because obviously that's what it's designed for. I can still use the Argon M.2 adapter because that just uses a USB 3 connection on the back. And so that would still fit in place. Uh, and also I can use a cable instead of this adapter. The DeskPi Pro, I guess, would, would be made to work um, because the adapters on the sides are plastic, so you could certainly cut them or leave them out. Although it does use a low profile ice tower cooler, which won't work because it's gonna be the wrong height and would need to be adapted. This case, again, uh, which would give you full size HDMIs, um, but it uses the same sort of configuration with the three and a half mil. So you'd have to actually snap that off or cut that down to be able to use that and then you can still use the USB-C and the two micro HDMI connectors as well. But that could be made to be adapted, but not ideal at all. Then we get to things like the 52Pi mini tower, and there was loads of towers uh, like this. Again, the cooler is not gonna work because the CPU is in a different place. Uh, so it's much further over to the right and, uh, as we're standing. So when this goes on, that goes directly on and so this part is going onto the CPU, and obviously with the existing configuration, that's not gonna happen. It touches it slightly, but just right on the edge here. But that would just need these two arms changing to be able to adapt it. So yeah, let's not rule those out. And when we look at this case, uh, I've only just noticed this, they're all the same height, so the ethernet is gonna fit into that. Well, that surprised me, because I wasn't expecting that, but because these have been made all the same height, the Pi 5 does actually fit in here. So the screws go into the plastic here. And uh, yeah, so that would actually work. But the ice tower cooler that goes on top of it wouldn't work. But then I could still put uh, on the glass panel that goes in the side, the fan, and use some active cooling with it without the heat sink. And that would be still pretty effective. Although it is blowing air 
either out or through the case uh, rather than actually directly onto the CPU or directly away from the CPU. The Pine Man case, uh, which is a lovely looking case with the low LED display on the front, a nice power button and everything, uh, also has the M.2 drive in the bottom there. Now that would work because the USBs align, but again, well this is a metal case, so it's not going to be that easy to shave that out. It could, you could do it, but it obviously, you know, depending on how good your skills are as to how neat that would look. Um, but because these are behind, they, they don't actually stick out like they do on the previous 52 Pi case. Uh, you could use it, but you would lose this USB 2 socket uh, on the Pi 5 because that would be over here and you just wouldn't be able to get something. Well, you might be able to get something in it, but it would be a tight squeeze, so not ideal, but a lovely looking case. This passively called uh, Dixon Industries case is really nice actually, and this actually goes further in down uh, and goes on to the CPU. And actually, I think this would be all right uh, because I've lost my Pi 5. There it is. It's in here. Because you would just put uh, a little thermal pad on here or some thermal paste, uh, and then it would sit directly on it. And I think it could either be adapted or it would fit, although these ribbon cables may stop it from going in exactly the right place. But yeah, that's going to passively cool it. I think that's, that's probably pretty much there. The official Raspberry Pi case uh, is sculpted for the Ethernet, so it doesn't really work. It sits in there fine, and uh, all of this can line up because all of this is in exactly the same place, uh, apart from, again, the headphone jack. So, yeah, not ideal. I did think about, or oh, maybe I should get uh, a Pi 3 version of this because the Pi 3 has this arrangement, but the Pi 3 is different along here uh, because it uses a full-size HDMI a bit like one of these older pies so nothing's going to line up and so this part would be very very different this 52 pi nas case is one of the better ones to fit so the usb is going to line up here obviously again we're going to lose this top usb 2 which would be over this side with a pi 5 in it but a fan will fit directly on here there's actually holes cut out so the fan that's in there which is using an ice tower cooler. So it's basically uh, similar to this, but it's mounted this way around on top of the Pi 5, uh, so it's lower. So again, they're not gonna line up without changing the, the mounting brackets, but you could just put a fan on there and have that fan driving directly down onto the Pi or taking heat away from the Pi, whichever you prefer. And uh, this has an M.2 drive in the bottom of it. So Yes, we've lost a USB 2 socket, but I rarely plug in all of my USB sockets. And if I do, I often will use a hub anyway. So that's a good one. And that would be one that I'll probably definitely use when I get more Pi 5s, when they're officially released. Another 52 Pi case, uh, same story really. This, this one has the cutout in the wrong place, so it doesn't officially fit. Again, you could cut this because it is just plastic. Uh, and we can use the M.2 drive in the bottom of here, so nice fast storage. When I'm talking about using M.2 drives, at the moment we are using it with the USB 3, which will limit them a bit, but it will still be nice and fast. What we really want to use is the PCIe slot, which is here, uh, because this is a very fast connection, which will be great for NVMe and M.2 drives in the future. But as uh, of the time of me doing this video, so 19th of September, there isn't an adapter for this, but obviously cases will have them in the future. So things like, you know, the Argon case will probably have it in the future, the 52 Pi cases, Geek Pi cases, things like that. Uh, we hope to see that happen because that's going to unlock the fastest storage we can have on it. We do have double speed on the SD card, which is great as well. Uh, and I've definitely noticed that in my tests. It is much, much faster on SD card. But yeah, the PCIe is the one we really un want to unlock. But until then, we're using USB 3. So whether that's USB drives or M.2 or NVMe drives. The Nest Pi case, I think, is a really cool case and uh, gives us these breakout USB sockets. Um, and actually, I've got, got a lot of hope for this because most of the sockets are breakout sockets. If I take the lid off, Inside there's a Pi 4 at the moment, 
Now this ethernet cable is way too short, but I'm pretty sure that just is ethernet and nothing else. So I'm not really worried about that. The cooler, well, you could take out that heatsink and put a more standard fan in there. Uh, or, or when we get um, you know, this style of cooler, there's gonna be an official Raspberry Pi cooler a bit, a bit like this with a PWM controlled fan, so controlled by temperature. And so that would go inside this case. So actually this case is gonna be fine because these are just using the USB sockets and they'll be over the other side, but these cables are long enough, so that's not a problem. So yeah, the Nest Pi case stays in the, it's okay to be able to use. Now, cases like this will be safe to use for years. You can fit all sorts of things in here. Obviously the, the holes tend to line up on Raspberry Pis, and so there'll be no issue in putting that in. We've got uh, all the ports and everything are accessible. So yeah, this is a UC Tronics case, and uh, yeah, so that fits absolutely fine and also has space for putting drives in and things like that. So yeah, really useful. But I'll probably end up sticking with my 52 Pi case that I've had for ages just because I love it. So there's a Pi 4 in here at the moment, but obviously that could be a Pi 5, it wouldn't make any difference. Now, again, uh, at the moment, oh, I've just dropped a screw. Uh, at the moment, this PWM fan would work with the Pi 5, but not with the heatsink that's on there. Um, but the fact that you have access to all the connections, I really like that. And I also have it this way around. I've actually got it on a, on a perspex sheet, which is just double-sided, but there are screw holes to fit the Pi on there. Uh, and the fan was on the back, but I don't really use the fan as a fan because the ice tower cooler and the PWM fan on the top are so good. So I moved it to the bottom and I just use the two of the GPIO pins to power because it's got a colorful LED lights on it. So I might just end up using that one. But obviously what's going to happen, I hope, is that uh, manufacturers are going to start sending me cases like they did before. So uh, I don't know how quick they get details on the design and everything of the Raspberry Pi 5, but uh, obviously there'll be some changes that will need to be made. Now, I talked about the PWM fan. The official fan is this connector, which will show up in config.tech. So when you connect a PWM fan to here, uh, so basically it plugs in and it'll have three cables going to the fan, uh, they'll automatically come up as settings in config.txt. Uh, not like on the Pi 4 where you could pick the pin 14 to enable the fan to come on and off. But uh, we'll see what happens anyway, because obviously it's early days and I'm making this video before the official announcement. And the last case that I've been using is this one, which is one of the cheapest cases and one of the earliest cases I had for Pi 4. But basically everything lines up. So because all of this just screws through, so that's four screws and four little perspex spacers that go on there. I can't see the fourth one. Oh, that's what I dropped on the floor earlier on. I can see it. Well, that took way too long to find. So then Pi 5 goes on top. And then we just have these little columns that screw on. So that's the last column screwed on. Just finger tight is fine. And I have been using this fan, uh, which is a PWM fan, but the red and the black are connected together. So that means that I can only use it in five volt configuration, unless I put a little adapter on there. Uh, and as the config.txt no longer has the automatic adjustment for a PWM fan. It used to be a setting you just turned on and off. Now it's gonna be the official types of fans that are supported. Uh, so I'm gonna wait till I get one of those. And for now, I'm gonna use uh, a fan like this, uh, which is a slightly bigger fan, slightly quieter, but also has separate cables. So I can have this one plugged into three volt or five volt. So three volts just gonna be quieter. Uh, five volt is going to run faster and be noisier, but not noisy. But if I was doing some more extreme uh, tasks on it, like the AI video I did yesterday uh, on the AI camera, that really taxed the Pi 4. Um, so yeah, that's nice to have that option. I've got several other that have got um, separate pins, which I really like. I prefer it to be separate pins. So this is a 52 Pi fan, and I know that it's obscured as well, 
but just for now it's going to make some difference until I've got a better solution and just to make sure that's nice and tight it's definitely worth having one of these screwdriver kits if you if you meddle around with a pie so just tighten that up and I could get a second bolt through here uh, but I'm not going to bother for now and this still has access to the GPO pins which I like and I often use this wave share board because it has these colored GPO pins which I really like so yellow is three volt and the two red ones are five volt and this black one is the negative so that would be the three volt configuration for this particular fan and the LED lights so let's plug this in so USB-C and I definitely recommend these this is a uh, LED readout display of how many watts the Pi is using I've got no operating system in this at the moment I'm just going to start it up just to show the lights on it so for a really quite inexpensive case I think it looks really nice and you can see at the moment it's using 2.4 watts of power and here it is on my desk using an SSD drive at the moment I've got links to all the cables and everything I'm using and it's using dual monitor desktop setup you can see I'm running Doom 3 on one monitor and P sensor and also the web browser on the other okay so I hope all this helps please subscribe to get more information videos on Raspberry Pi and hopefully lots of new case reviews coming and uh, callers and things like that thanks very much for watching please like and subscribe